I'm Nicole King, and this is Marbella Now. Hey, hey, it's a brand new Lots of people will recognize my first guest this week. His name is Giles Brown. He's been here for years, lots of the exciting years in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 20s. Very few people know and understand our city like Giles does, not just from the international aspect, but from a Spanish aspect. And as he's a journalist, he's a broadcaster, he's an editor, he's a blogger, an event organizer, MC. Hello, Giles. All fighting on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, but Hello. And coffee drinker. Coffee drinker. Coffee drinker. Absolute. How can we forget the coffee? I'm a test coffee? pilot. I'm a test pilot <laughs> for Santa Cristina, who is my patron saint as we come up to San Bernabe, of course. Lovely to be here. Lovely to see you. Lovely to have you on the set. The last time I chat with you officially on air was from the Melia Don Pepe about five years ago when you just launched Planet Marbella. Yeah, planetmarbella.com, my sort of news blog that reports on everything that's happening in Marbella from a sort of international and very strange perspective for somebody who's lived here for a very long time. You came over here when you were in, you said about 17, in the 80s. Yep. Very interesting time for Marbella. It was wild. I mean, it was not like the family Marbella we know now. There was the normal Spanish life, but the international world was certainly very much like a night evening world. Well, yeah, yes and no. I always say to people, because we've had a, in the past 20 years, my bear has gone, has gone through a sea change. Things have changed beyond all recognition. The number of people who are now living here as the city continues to expand as a leisure destination. But when we came here in 1985, and let's just have a think, the top, of the top of the charts was like Tears for Fears, Sledgehammer had just come out, Phil Collins, an easy, easy lover and all that. So imagine that. Yeah, Live Aid. Anyway, um, then it was a much smaller community. Uh, a lot of it was based around Puerto Buenos Aires, Nueva Andalusia, which was much smaller uh, than it was in those days. But still, it, was a, it had that Pueblo feel to it. You know, there were only three or four places you could go in the night. There were Sinatra's, there was Joe's Bars, there was the English cinema that showed English films every Friday night. In the tin hut where the, the car park is. the corrugated <laughs> iron roof. First time I saw the mission with Robert De Niro, I thought that was a sound effect. It was actually the rain The rain, on the I roof. was there. I remember it well. Exactly. It was very, uh, very different. But, it was very different. But you said that then it was more like, I still feel that Marbella has the quaint feeling to it. Although Nueva Andalucía yes. is 15 times bigger, Puerto Banús is unrecognisable in the fact that you can't just stroll around with your kids going to candle shops in the, as they did in the old days. I do still feel Marbella has that village charm. I had uh, a couple of guys came over, friends of mine, about uh, five years ago, and they came to Marbella, and they hadn't been to Marbella before. We came for a stag. A friend of ours was getting married. And they were like, oh, gosh, Marbella. And we made a rule, right? No, no shots, no chupitos and uh, nothing to do with Benus. Okay, we took them to the old town and they were totally blown away because they, they thought, oh my goodness, I didn't think Marbella was gonna be like this. And I said, aha, you see, that's because Marbella is what it, you want it to be. So if you want it to be flashy, a little bit chashy, mega yachts, supermodels, occasional supercar, go to Banus. Yeah? If you want to enjoy the campo, get in your car, drive 15 minutes up the East End Road to where I live on the Lago, and it's completely naturaleza. And if you want to be it to be romantic, then just head to the old town. If you want to say Tabloma Flamenco, you know where to go. So Marbella can change your mood from having tapas on the side of the road to a glitzy gala at the Marbella Club. The nice thing is that everything is available, that you can come to go cycling, hiking, anything you want to do, as you say, you can choose it. I do none of those things, but yeah, I, I kind of get, get where you're coming from. Me either, but the nice thing is there is something yeah. for everybody. But in the sense of coming to Marbella with the glitz and glamour, going to Marbella in the old town, mm -hmm. it's a very different thing. A lot of people, I think the international press hasn't done us any favours in the sense of those cheap Brit tours that came over a few years ago. Even my, uh, my son-in-law's mother said, I'm going to go watch you guys on telly. And it was the only way was, S uh, was like um, Mife and Marbs or one of these. Tower, yeah. One of yeah, yeah and I, I was like... 
That's not us. That's not us. But a lot of people do think that's all yeah, there is. Yeah, but that's like going to London and going to Leicester Square and going, I didn't like London because I went to Leicester Square. That's not real Marbella. Yeah. So you, if you go, come to Marbella and go to Puerto Manos, that's not Marbella. You know, Marbella is, is, well, you know, the villas, the parties, the, the people that you meet. Because in the summer, this place is a city. And in the winter, it's a pueblo. And everybody knows, everybody who matters knows each other down here. So that's the thing. So it's very easy for the international press. And it's not just the Brits. I've had, we've had Dutch TV come down here. We've had Swedish TV come down here. And they want to have that, uh, makes it look like the, the version of Florida or, you know, I don't know, Grand Theft Auto Marbella style, mm -hmm. you know, which they bought a video game out a couple of years ago with that. And so it's very easy to sell with that whole sort of not quite real people thinking they're living in a rap video. But the, the reality is, as I said, it's like going to a big city. It's like going to Paris and seeing Notre Dame and going, ah, oh, you know, I've seen Paris. We have our little quiet corners that we, that we know and we just don't tell anybody about. Yes, it's hard actually sometimes when you do have those corners and they're wonderful and you want to share them, but then if you share them, they'll be spoiled so you kind of end up keeping them quiet. I remember a few times getting the opportunity to interview actors at the Marbella Film Festival. Oh, yeah. But they were doing those gangster movies based in Marbella, talking about things that had happened here really to people we know in such a, like, flippant way. And I was like, I, I can't do this interview. I'm going to have to focus this another way. It's not the way I want to or I see Marbella. I don't see that gangster side. I don't see this trashy yeah, side because I live in a completely different Marbella. Exactly, as with any big... You must understand that Marbella is now a, a resort city. I mean, despite what we, we w would love to be at the 80s when you, everybody knew everybody else without mobile. Imagine a, imagine a world trying to find people without mobile phones, but we did it. You know, we were involved in the nightlife business in the 80s. No mobile phones. No, no social media. No social media. No mobiles. I mean, mobiles were the size of a house, you know, a house brick, weren't they? So we just used to say, you know, have you seen so-and-so and ask the, the waiters in the, in the various bars and there. So, you know, like I said before, the, there's an awful lot of that whole hashtag mob, selfie-taking crowd. Here we are at this beach you know putting your best assets forward but you know as i said before the reality of, of everyday living here is a little bit different and yes there are pocket pockets that are a little bit trashy but you get that everywhere but the you know the reality of my berries and i get it sometimes we all get this sort of marble which is like oh another day in my bed which is a really bad attitude to have it is we're a privilege to Trent, be here and trust me trust me <laughs> i don't plan on going back on any time soon to stoke it's uh, funny how you say that in the sense that it's so easy to become blasé mm. with living somewhere as privileged as Marbella. But it's important that those of us who live here get involved with the city. In fact, I had a meeting this morning in the town hall about how important it is for people to sign on the Padron, yeah. to become a part of the city, otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much money you have. If you don't sign on the Padron, they don't get money for the police to protect your property. It's like basics that are nice that we get to share. You're very much a part of the city, the infrastructure of the city. Did you kind of like fall into this position? Because 17 years old, yeah. party Marbella, young here at the right time, and now one of the most respected journalists, and on an international level, it's not just locally. I mean, you really have, and congratulations, having known him for many years, it's lovely to see that you've come to such a really established and recognised position in each of your fields. Well, that's, that's very kind of you to say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I... Like many people, you know, when I came here when I was 17, I went to the English International College here. So I dropped a year and I thought, great, I'm going to sit on the beach, listen to Tears for Fears and Bowie and, and have a good time. But my dad said, no, I've got you a job in the Polygonal. So I went off to work in, knock, in, a, in, a, in a locale there in a nave, knocking paint off beds. I didn't speak any Spanish. So I learned, I learned the drink, the food and the swear words. With the, with the accent, so that's consequently how so I... Andaluz immediately. Andaluz, yeah. Andaluz, yeah. So that, that was the whole thing. Um, but the great thing is that if you, it's like anything else. If you put the effort in to be friendly and nice, then this place is the best place in the world. Cause they, and in fact, even more so than anywhere else in Spain, because they're used to having idiot foreigners like us around. Um, and, and yes, it's an interest. I mean, I, you know, I went back to the UK uh, in the early 90s, you know, when I spent time working for Reader's Digest, writing for the Times a bit, editor of a property magazine at 23. Um, and uh, that was great fun. But after nine years in London, I came back for a wedding here for, for a weekend. And I stayed for three weeks. And that's when all the magazines had started here. And I thought, you know, I think I'll come back and see, I'll come back for six months and see how it goes. And that was 24 years ago now. So yeah, so, you know, I've always been passionate. I do believe in this place very much so. I do believe that it is unlike anywhere else 
uh, on the planet, which is why I call it Planet Marbella, because Marbella doesn't, doesn't obey any of the normal rules on planet Earth, basically. Sometimes. It's a world unto itself. It's a world unto itself. And as long as you've got to keep a sense of humor about it, and you're prepared to, to work hard, because I, I think people tend to think that we just lie around. I mean, we were, we were at the, uh, the function yesterday, which was lovely and wonderful and great to see that investment coming into Marbella. And I hope it will lead to real investment in Marbella. But they think we just swan around with a, with a cocktail in our hands and, and things fall, you know, and we're always on the beach on, every afternoon. And of course, we're like ducks. You know, we're gliding gracefully on the surface of the water, but we're paddling madly beneath. That's exactly how it is. But it's funny, we were talking actually earlier with my intern of how each of us in our own world sees the importance of our own world and don't appreciate the time mm. and what it means for somebody else that to make something seem so seamlessly easy, but it really isn't. Do you think, I personally believe that your time leaving Marbella, you were here, but you then went and got a real job in a real world, you then came back with abilities that a lot of people who have this beach concept and everything's just swanning around, you then can, there's a lot of opportunities in Marbella if you actually really want to work and apply, let's say, international ethics. Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, I think it was very important in those days to go. I think, it's, if, I think if, you, if you grow up here, then it's important to go away and go somewhere else. See the world. I mean, you know, you know how it is. You, you've got, you, you know, you're, I know you're a child's bride, but you have children too. And, you know, they've been away and they've gone to fantastic places and they've come back here with that experience. And I think that's very, very important. So you don't just get that, that single that single mindset. The one thing I, I do th think about here is the fact that uh, a couple of weeks ago I went back to a, an informal dinner uh, with some schoolmates to celebrate the, the 40th anniversary of the school and we're going to have a big bash in September. But it's interesting because the friends that you make here are the friends that you keep forever. And I'm just thinking about, I, I don't know many other places where you can go to school with people and then 40 years later, you're still on first name terms with, with a great majority of them. And that's one of the great things. Maybe it's because you go through a, such, an, a is such an experience because it goes from that quiet Pueblo to those crazy summer nights uh, to the, the hard work. But I think you, you, do, you do form real friendships here. I also think, undeniably this is true, but I do believe to some degree the weather really makes a big difference because we're a lot happier. The sun shines more often, the sun is invigorating, and it's like it's, it's nice to be nice to each other. I don't see that as many other places in the sense, and I looked at this when I started the radio and television. Mm. My idea is all, oh, at that time, 127 nationalities on the town census now 147, that we could, I could like diagnose this to get world peace. What is it that makes this work? And then I realized, some great sadness, the fact that we actually ignore each other. The Brits let the French get on with it, who let the Belgians get on with it, who let the Chinese, everybody here, although we do mix, maybe the press a little bit more, but everybody leaves each other to themselves. One gets on their own business, they're not looking out to see what other people are doing. So that's, that was my sense, is the reason we works peace in Marbella between everyone is because we're not really looking at what everyone else is doing. Yeah, but I think, again, that's, that's a change in the, in the way that people have now, because of, for most people, it's easy to move around and work around in Europe. I think the thing was that a lot of people decided they could come and the, the advent of the internet, this whole idea of digital nomads that's now coming in, you can work from anywhere. So who wouldn't want to come and work from a place like Marbella? Uh, but I think a lot of people who have come over for just that reason, just like they're in little units and like it or low that, I mean, the Brits have a, a particular habit, a superpower, if you will, is they will stick to their own like glue. Actually, more the English, because the Scottish tend to sort of are very gregarious. My mother was from Scotland, um, so. Uh, but I think that's a particularly. Uh, I think that's a particular thing that perhaps in the old days there were so few expat immigrants, call them what you will, that therefore, if you were in doing, seeing the, if you were doing the foreign experience in Marbella, if you like, uh, then that that marked you off, and, and you you hung out with the Dutch, you hung out with the Norwegians. Yeah, in things. those days we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In those days it was like everybody was together. Yeah. That's why my first radio was me Marbella, because in me Marbella everyone hung out together. In those days, but now there's just so many yeah. of us. But you know that's 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 progress. That's Marbella growing because you know uh, yes we don't have perhaps that everybody knows everybody else sort of thing, but at the same time. 
you can get to the airport in 40 minutes, you can get a phone line, you can get, a, you know, we, I mean, it used to be three need, years for a phone line. It used, to be a three, it used to be three years to get to the airport, never yeah. mind that. So, <laughs> so, you know, there are, there are benefits to that as well. And like I said, when I, was, when I left to go back to London in 1991, there was no, there was no business for, for anybody who didn't want to be in real estate or golf or retired. So Marbella has come on like that, like it or leather, and everybody will have a, a Marmite, as we call it, a love-hate relationship with Marbella, but at the end of the day, you know, you open up your window, the sun is shining, the sea is beautiful. There are beautiful places. You just have to tweak your mindset a little bit and, and realize yeah, well, that we're Turn you into be. tour guide as an, as an extra, if you want to know really what Marbella is about. Tell us a little bit about your radio show on Talk Radio Europe. I'm a broadcaster on Talk Radio Europe. I do seven shows a week, so I must be doing something right. Uh, normally from 10 till 12, uh, Monday to Friday, and then on Friday I let my hair down a bit. And I do each a, one, each one <laughs> particularly from the ears. And uh, I do um, I do a sort of a rock and lifestyle show from f from four to six. And then I do a Saturday morning breakfast show from nine until uh, 11, which is called a slice of brown. So it actually really these shows that you do cover each aspect of your personality. I've got so many splits in my personality. Oh, exactly, because I mean, yeah. you do have a lot of um, talents in the sense and taste. You're very humorous, you're very witty, which you get out with your writing. Thank and you. so that's nice that you get to blog that one yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then also your taste in music and then your opinions and um, what's going on in the world. You like to... People have said, people have said that it's, you, I, I've got a great interview technique. Well, if you've been living in Marbella for 30 years, you meet so many different people at, at openings, at cocktail parties, in house viewings. So you can always have a conversation. You should always be able to have a conversation with somebody. For, for 10 to 15 minutes because everybody, everybody has a story to tell and you might find something from that person. You can start talking to somebody who you might think has got nothing to say what, whatsoever but from that really dull person could be a nugget of information or it could open a door that changes your life. How do you deal with the variety of personalities on the coast because as you say everybody has something to offer and I believe that everyone has that certain little something which I like you can see it and do something with that to like help them promote what their the best aspects are. But there is a lot of different worlds in Marbella. You're a very down to earth guy. You live on the lake that is just terrifying to get to. I don't know how you go back and forth every day. It's just like <laughs> lots of coffee, lots of coffee. <laughs> Nerves of steel and Some... a beautiful home to get to, but yeah. just like terrifying. How do you balance the different worlds of the real worlds? The and that, this like glamorous world that you, because you're so much part of both of them. Nicola, you, you, know, you know how Nicole, you know how things go around here. You know, it's yes, but I mean, you, Dyla, so Dyla Wellen, he used to, you know, he used to come here a lot. He said once told me, Marbella was like the hostess at a really brilliant party, and she would halfway through the party she would go up and she would change into a different dress, and she'd come down, and you know the the look would have changed but the party was still the same. So you have to be able to, the people may change, but the party is still the same. And you just have to say, okay, well, tonight, you know, it, it is like being stars in my eyes. Tonight, I'm going to be the serious journalist. And then a little bit later, I will, I will be the rock journalist, and then I'll be the writer. But again, Marbella affords me, and affords anybody the opportunity to reinvent themselves or just to, to live life on their own terms. Well, you certainly are living life on your own terms and you can catch up with Giles in so many ways. Planetmarbella.com. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> also on Talk Radio Europe every single day every with single a little day. bit of everything and the slice of brown's always good. Thank you. If you ever want to give Giles a coffee, he, uh, a gift, he loves coffee. Coffee, coffee. Yes. Coffee, Powered coffee. Powered by coffee and coffee, pure coffee thoughts. And yeah, coffee, coffee, coffee. More coffee. And also you are an excellent master of ceremonies. Thank you. I have to say you make events fun. Um, and obviously you get very involved. You take things, the charities personally, when you do a charity. Yeah, but you see, the thing is because, I said before, you get, you get back what you put in, yeah? I'm extremely lucky to be here. I really am, yeah? I'm extremely lucky to be sitting here at, uh, in my mid-50s talking to you. And when I was asked to MC charity events and they were like, what do you want? And I said, I don't want anything for this because you have to have... Even in Mumbai, you have to have some integrity and you get back what you put in. And that's my way of, of getting back. And it's always, if I'm asked to do something for charity like that, I always will. Well, so. An amazing professional. Ghostwriter, content writer, broadcaster, Planet Marbella. 
dot com. <laughs> and everything else besides Giles Brown, thank you very much. I hope it's not another five years before you come back on this Something show. Something tells me it won't be. Done. Something tells me it won't be <laughs> too. Mwah! <laughs> Don't go away. I'll be back in a moment. Thank you so much. Hey, hey. John's car is still being repaired. So he's delighted that Judy has come to pick him up. However, after a very heavy business trip, he's less than enthusiastic when her car breaks down. I had sure with Linia Director. She tells John. So please do relax, I've got this. And she had. The taxi was there in no time. Her car safely towed for repairs and a courtesy car readily available. Call Linear Director on 952-1478-34 to see how they can better your life too. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstan. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And, uh, we recommend everybody, nobody drives drinking, everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system and we're proud to sponsor Zero Hero Program. GYN is happy to be Zero Hero Partner. How cool is that? <laughs> GYN. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? CIT Marbella is an amazing business networking association. Nearly 500 companies covering over 80 different professions, all supporting each other. The association is really good because they're very involved with local laws and different associations that give support, even financing for different projects. So very well worth it, not just for big companies, but also for small companies. Each week we're very lucky to welcome a CIT Marbella guest. This week we have two, because this lovely young lady, Cherise of CPG Lawyers, couldn't be with us a couple of weeks ago. She was held up in court, and instead of her worrying to rush back, we decided we'd just book her in for another day so today it is booked in with Cherise very lovely to meet you hello how are you I'm so happy to be here with you today oh, that's very nice to meet you and also to know that CPG Abogados CPG Abogados CPG law firm is you it's you nice. started this yeah. firm and it's a uh, congratulations thank you very much <laughs> you look too young to be in law but obviously it's a long career yeah of course Tell more than 10 years already yeah so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you from originally? How did you get started on your law career? Okay, I'm from Madrid. And seven years ago, I came here to the Costa del Sol, to Marbella, for, to work in a big company. And three years ago, I decided to, to start in my own law firm. Why? Because I, I wanted to give to my clients the dedication, the attention, the quality of my work that I want. So... I'm here in Marbella, I, after three years, so happy because I have a lot of clients that they are happy with me uh, because I think that the attention for the clients is very important. I've seen that you cover a lot of aspects yeah. of the law and some of them that you don't see frequently. You do family law, but you also do all, ki like all kinds of sectors. Can one specialize in so many things? Okay, I think that they have two as uh, two, um, two matters very important. The court, the law court, uh, if you need some help in the court because you have to claim someone or someone is claiming you, I can help you. A part of that, I am helping a lot of uh, foreign people here in Marbella that they want to invest, they want to buy a house, or maybe they need a visa or resident here. Uh, all that matter, I can, I can help. And I think that it's very important, the contract, uh, because sometimes the people say, no, I don't need a, a, a lawyer for, for helping with the contract because it's easy. 
I think that is very important to to ask for a, the advice of a of a lawyer for for the contract. That could be perhaps one of the biggest mistakes, particularly the yeah. foreigners make. Exactly. Is that they're going to rent somewhere yes. and they sign contracts for 11 months or all yes. different things that they think are law, but when it comes to it, actually the law says something different and they're unaware exactly. of their rights and their obligations. Yeah, and the problem is when you have signed the signed the contract after we have to claim uh, because you have abusive clause or anything or something that is not right. So I think in my best advice to my clients always is ask for the advice of, uh, of the lawyer because you avoid a lot of problems after. What do you find is the most frequent things people come to see you about? What do we make the most mistakes in or need oh. the most help with? Okay, with the real estate, it's very, it's very common here in the coastal zone because when you want to buy a house or some local or everything, it's very important to have the, the good advice here for the license, uh, the urbanizations and everything. So it's very important, the, the lawyer for that. I have uh, uh, many clients for, that you want to, to invest or to buy a house here and they need uh, the help of the, of the lawyer. And as, as well, the, the resident here, because now in Spain, if you are from Europe, okay, because you can stay here wherever you want. But if you are, for example, from United Kingdom now, you cannot be here more than say, six months. So it's very important to, to get a, a good visa or resident here. So it's very common that. And it's um, tricky, the paperwork in Spain. There's a lot of steps to it. It's not difficult, but it is difficult to negotiate on your own. Exactly. I think so. <laughs> I think so important. too. Yeah, it's very important, yes. I was just talking today that with the elections coming up mm. next year and the rights of the Brits, it would seem that if you've been a resident in Spain with and on the Padron for over three years, you'll still be able to vote in local elections. So that was a nice surprise for the Brits now that we're not European. But there are lots of little things that we could miss by just not knowing the local laws. Yeah, because you have to 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 um, to be clear that we have the problem with the language uh, of the law that everybody has. Uh, for example, the Spanish people too, and they need the help with the contract and all uh, its um, advice that they need. But apart of that, for the foreign people, the language is not the same. So it's very important to have, you know, the the clear uh, mention of the of the contract or everything. So I think that is very very important to to ask the, the advice. Yeah, I also a lot of people that foreign people when they sign contracts, they're given contracts that are written in two languages. Yeah. But perhaps they don't realize that the binding language is the Spanish. Yeah. And unless the translation's been Isn't done by a professional with your interest at heart, or you've got a lawyer to oversee it, a lot of people get caught out. Yeah, in that way, and the, and the translation is not the, the same. And sometimes the translation in English, for example, or in another language, is not the, mm, totally clear. No, I've, I've seen it to... myself. Exactly. In the sense, the English says what I want, would like it to say, but the Spanish doesn't say yeah, the same. Yeah. And that's when you realize, like, whoa, and the one that's valid is the Spanish. So it's very important yeah. to use. It. Are you enjoying law as much as you thought you would initially when you started your career? Yeah. I love I love my career. It's complicated sometimes because you have to work a lot. And a lot of studying. <laughs> no, because the laws change in Spain all, all the time. time. Yeah, of course, a part of that. And a part of that, I, I don't have time because I have my telephone ringing all the time. So, okay, but I love uh, my work. I like uh, when my clients are happy with me, with my attention, with my work. So it's It's lovely that. <laughs> It sounds like your company needs to expand. What are your visions for the future? Are you looking to be one of these big buffetes, these big law firms? No. Or, you, or you just like keeping yeah. it cherries and keeping yeah, it sweet? Yeah, because simple. I have worked with, with, for a big company, a big uh, law firm here and in Marbella. But I preferred a law firm boutique with uh, the attention it's um, special uh, with me with um, as a lawyer of course i have some person working with me f because i need help sometimes but uh, i don't want to be a very big uh, company i want to be a, a boutique you know it's like when you when you go and the and this the attention is is good is special you have your set clients exactly. and just do a really good exactly. job for them yeah 
exactly. How did you find it coming from Madrid to Marbella, getting to network and to meet people? Not uh, for LinkedIn, because uh, a big uh, law firm here called me by, by LinkedIn or contacted me by LinkedIn and they said, okay, maybe I can try it. Okay, the Ma Madrid is really nice, but here you can you have the beat. So I said, okay, we, I, we can try, we can try. And after seven years, I he <laughs> I'm here with my law firm. So and no desire to go and anywhere. No desire <laughs> to go anywhere, exactly. Well, if you're looking for advice and a law firm, someone who can give you personalized attention, Cherise, you're absolutely charming. Oh, who wouldn't want that. to spend time and get at least, if you talk about serious things, at least to do it in a, in a nice and positive fashion. Thank you very much. It's really so a pleasure to meet you. The same for me. So contact Cherise if you would like um, advice and please do always get contracts checked. If you're going to sign anything, speak to a professional <laughs> first. If you're buying anything, speak to a professional. <laughs> Whatever you're doing. And if you've got problems getting your paperwork, speak to a professional. <laughs> CIT Marbella, thank you very much for another wonderful introduction. And don't go away, guys, because we'll be back in just a moment. Hero. Welcome here. here. I think now to the room. Let the music get to your heart. Let it set you on your way. No time to hesitate. Feel Welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Tearing us apart. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. Ciro Giro, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Hi guys, Hazatua is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. As my first guest mentioned, we were at an event just recently. It was the pre-inauguration of Club Med Magna Marbella. Very exciting that after 70-something years, Club Med is come back to our city. It was in Spain initially, in the Balearic Islands, I think in Alcudia, with tents. That was the original camp. But now they've taken over what was the Don Miguel Hotel, they have taken an abandoned building that we thought had seen its last days and turned it completely around. They've got such an amazing installation set up for children, adults, sport, all-round entertainment and the opportunity to explore and understand Marbella, Malaga and Andalusia. Let's go over now to the recordings I took yesterday. Nice little chat with the person in charge of expansion and the different... Um, places that they've got in Europe and Africa, Gino. It really was exciting to see so many people and that Marbella is again the hub of so much exciting and new investment. Let the 
It's a brand new day Hey, hey Congratulations, what a wonderful start to a new era in Spain for Club Med. And you personally, you're in charge of Europe and Africa. What does it mean to you to be opening Club Med in such an emblematic hotel for Marbella as the Don Miguel? So thank you very much first. Uh, what I would like to, um, to express is uh, this moment is, is a great moment for me in my career, but a great moment for Club Med as well, and uh, I hope a great moment for Marbella. We had the chance to have, uh, during the last four years, uh, work with uh, beautiful and fantastic partners, uh, with Magna Mar Marbella uh, Hotel and Resort, with uh, uh, Jihad Magareff, that has been a, a, a true partner in, in this fantastic experience. Second thing for us is a lot of emotion. Why a lot of emotion? It's because Clement was born in Spain a long time ago, 72 years ago, in, in, uh, in uh, Alcudia, in the Balears. So for us, is the renew of Clement and to renew, we needed the, to, to be in the best place of Spain, one of the best places in Europe now, which is Andalusia and Marbella, the iconic Marbella. So for you personally, also, this is a big coup. It's a big step forward to have Marbella on the Club Med circuit. Exactly. I mean, to, to have Marbella on the map of the Med, it's a great accomplishment that is done with uh, the fantastic teams that did work on it. Because uh, today we see something that uh, it's almost finished, still 10 days of uh, a bit of work. But uh, behind that, it's uh, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, who work. A lot of uh, Spanish companies and companies from Marbella, a lot of teams that work together. So the behind the scene is fantastic. and. Uh, we have a great video that showcases that. And, and today we see a product that is the, the quintessence, I would say, of the uh, hard work of a lot of people. So a lot of emotion for Clamed, a lot of emotion for our teams and for myself, but a great moment to expose Marbella to the, to the world. Clamed is a 48 website in 18 languages. And uh, since now a few months, Marbella is at the center of it. It's lovely to drive up here and see Don Miguel 
behind all the refurbishments because the hotel looks the same but modern. That was quite an achievement to take such an abandoned building and make it so vital. I think that's you're totally right. We, we went from uh, Don Miguel Hotel uh, to the Magna Marbella Club Med. I think it's a great transformation. Uh, it's not a renovation, it's a real transformation. We keep the same look outside, but everything inside has been uh, transformed. Everything has been re -look. And we have now, as we are a bit up the city, we can uh, see the city from uh, one, this wonderful hotel. And we, from the city, we can see also the light of Marbella that is lit in, uh, during the night and showcase the beauty of this resort. So for us, it's very important as well to, to represent what is Marbella today. A modern, very nice and very uh, great product that is Marbella, a very great city. As I understand Club Med, it's all inclusive. Do you have to come and stay at the hotel to enjoy the facilities or will local residents be welcome in? What is the focus so of the things. hotel? Uh, for, for us, what is important is to share the beautiful Andalusia. So even though it's all inclusive, we have organized and we organize also tours outside of the resort to make sure that they're going to see Andalusia, make sure that they're going to see Marbella as well. And of course, our clients here are in all inclusive. That means all inclusive for us is very important. It's the enrichment of the kids with uh, all the activities we have uh, at the mini kids club. We welcome kids starting four months old to 17 years old. And of course, at the same moment, uh, you have parents that can enjoy all the activities, the sports activities. But you have to be staying in the hotel? Yes, to stay in the hotel. But starting September and after it's going to be off season and during the season, the possibility for the residents of Marbella to enjoy this magnificent place. is, like I said, to meet the beauty of Andalusia, to meet the exceptional place that is Marbella, and also to enjoy some sports and to do some sport. As you have seen, all the kids' activities are located in the part of the resort. But for a couple, uh, it's totally great to, to enjoy the resort and to do sports in the resort. And what we see today is that we have a lot of reservation of uh, what we call the 3G families, the three generations. So most of them is grandparents coming with their kids and then grandkids. And what is great in Clement that each category of age can have his own happiness, his own pleasure. The small kids, at the same moment, the parents can play sports and uh, do uh, a spa or whatever. And the grandparents can enjoy some moments in this beautiful resort and enjoy also, or the entire family, to enjoy beautiful Marbella and Andalusia. Will you be having entertainment in the evenings? As of course. All club meds are course. so in renowned. All, yeah, yeah, in all club meds, we, uh, we have different kind of happenings and uh, entertainment different every evening. It's not only big shows, it's happenings into the resort and of course some live music, some uh, some artists coming from Spain, not only, and our geos, which are the, 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 the collaborators that are with us, that will perform on stage. It's a very exciting project for you all. Will you be able to come and visit Marbella often or once it's set up, you won't be able to come back? What's the... Listen, Marbella for me, it's a... Uh, it's, it's a city that I love because it's a beautiful city. I came the last uh, three years often to follow up uh, on, on the construction, but uh, everything I've seen, every place I've seen in Marbella has been for me an astonishing moment. So for sure I will come back and I think I will come back in holiday to enjoy that even more. To Can enjoy. I recommend you stay at the wonderful new Club Med? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you know, my, my family is uh, they are a fan of Club Med, so I will come in Marbella to enjoy. My, my daughter enjoy very much all the trapeze, flying trapeze. My wife is a fan of spa and uh, activities, uh, also sports activities, yoga. So she will be able to do aerial yoga. My daughter will be able to do the flying trapeze. And I will be able to relax a bit, enjoy some cocktail and drinks at the Gourmet Lounge or here at the bar or at the main restaurant. Well done. Congratulations. I look forward to seeing more of you during the course of the progress of the hotel and uh, really is a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you and uh, all my warm uh, salutation to the resident of Marbella that I hope I will meet very soon. We we'll look forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, we are at one, one. Hey, hey. One, one. Okay. Okay.
proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. So here we are at Everest. Yeah, Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers going up. Hey, yeah. Uh, my name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, to Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Sister Taperia. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> CIT Marbella, as I mentioned earlier, is a business networking association. And every week a group member of theirs comes to the show to share with us what they do. This week we've had two CIT Marbella guests because Cherise of CPG Abogados, the law firm, was in court and she missed her slot. So we have the double pleasure of another guest this week and I'm welcoming back the lovely Hema of the Internalia Group. Lovely to see you again, Hema. Lovely to see you again, Nicole. It four seems, years. Yes, it's been four years. Four years and the first thing that Hema said was, you weren't blonde when we met last time. <laughs> so quite a few changes in the last yes. four years. We met the first time because you were presenting a mobile exhibition at the Marbet Exhibition Center. Yeah, Mobile Day. Mobile Day, a very big event. Mm -hmm. You are a software company. Yeah. Now, it's funny because this is a subject I know nothing about. And I always find it confusing. Software, what is exactly <laughs> software? We probably use it all the time without realizing we're using software. Yes, everybody uses software well, every day. Everybody uses the mobile phone. And we are a corporate uh, software development based on the PTA, Malaga Tech Park. And uh, it's based on uh, cloud computing applications. Uh, and it's that enhances the, the, the automation and the productivity of the field force and uh, the work uh, force of a company. Uh, what's a software? What's your question? Software is the, the tool that uh, allows a company to make some activities uh, at real time, for example. Uh, people outside the office working, making some kind of, of task. Uh, for example, uh, technician people, sales people, or delivery or people, delivery people right. cleaning people, they need to send real data information, information at real time. They can do it by the mobile phone thanks to our, our applications. So you mean so instead of sending um, an email yeah. or messaging everybody, you can have instant contact okay. with a whole team even mm -hmm. if they're not in the office at the time? That's right. And they can send the signature of the client, for example, saying, that's okay, this work you have made. And uh, the picture of the, the work they have made and all these things. So uh, like delivery yeah. companies like a UPS or a DHL, when they come yes. and these are all the programs that you guys are making so this is possible? Yes, this, this kind of programs we, we develop. Wow. <laughs> so do you like produce Project products that you then offer to sell, or do you make them for companies specifically, or take a product and adapt it for each company? How does it work? Well, we have different applications they have developed yet. Uh, uh, already they have developed, and they you can download it uh, from the App Store or the Play Store. A company that need to to change some process to be more proactive, uh, they can download these applications and we give them a serial key to uh, join the mobile phone with the cloud. So any kind of uh, data they can send with these applications. It depends on the necessities of, the, of each company, but we are focused on services companies because they usually have more people outside the office making some works. So, uh, as I said, it depends on the necessities. They contract uh, uh, one application or another, uh, but we have several lines of applications. For example, we are the, our bestseller app is Working Day Suite. It's a suite of applications that have GPS location, uh, forms, digital forms, uh, schedule, uh, 
uh, orders, they can make orders and send in orders, check in, check out to, to, to see or to say how many hours they have spent with each client, for example. So this it's is a very, very useful good control data. for head office. To yes, people uh, say are oh, where they say they are. Yes, that's hey. okay. <laughs> and uh, for example, it's very important for the client to, to make for the customer because uh, it allows the company to uh, to give a better service for the customer. For example, uh, that that they uh, the the people the cleaning people uh, has passed to my office. Yes, let me check it, please. And they can get into the cloud and make different filters and see and search for the day or for the cleaning people uh, and say yes. That day, at that time, uh, a person of my company have passed to, uh, to your company and make the, the work. So uh, it's, it's useful not only to see if the, my employees are working uh, correctly, but also for the customer to guarantee that the work they have contracted is made. So they can actually see that there's the evidence and the follow-up, you're not just believing. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have to have training for these um, apps or, this, or is it easy and intuitive? Very, ones? Yes, that's the key because uh, SME companies uh, that we are focused on this uh, niche, uh, this market niche, uh, uh, they, uh, they don't have uh, time enough and resources enough or uh, money enough, why don't you say that? Uh, to spend uh, long uh, days and months uh, working in a, another big software, for example, SAP. You know, I don't know if you don't know the the, the name SAP, Navision, Microsoft. Uh, this bigger software, they don't uh, fit for these kind of companies. Our apps are very easy to use. They can install almost immediately. They can download from the App Store and they can run in with it. And mm, this kind of apps uh, gives a company a big results in a very short time. So uh, people, their employees can use to, 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 make, to get used with, uh, with these apps. It's very easy for, for them. And they can repair easily data from the first moment. It does sound like in a very fast-moving world where everybody wants everything yesterday, that this is a very appropriate service. Do mm -hmm. people understand why they need an app or is it hard for people to get them in familiar that they can do all this control from a simple app? Well, um, it's very easy to understand that they need these applications overall uh, uh, during these days. Uh, during the, the circumstances of the market, the market is changing every day and companies need to be updated with the digitalization. They need to be digital because this allows a company to make changes uh, very quickly. Uh, they can adapt to the changes of the market thanks to the, the, um, the, the technical uh, tools. Um, and these applications um, gives the company uh, the, 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 the mean to, to, to make these changes uh, and to adapt to, the, to these changes uh, in a very short time. So they, they understand why they need uh, this kind of application because uh, they may um, uh, some uh, they may have uh, these people I, they, they don't know how, uh, if they are working uh, correctly the, the work or where they are or they have the, these different uh, informations in different recipients in a paper or in an Excel or in a computer or it in the mobile everything phone. Everything in one space. Yes, they know the, the advantages of having all this information in a in a one uh, space in a cloud. It sounds like it's affordable. You're talking about apps, downloading from the app stores and this. Is it something that all companies can afford? Does it increase with the amount of yes. users? Yes, it's a SaaS software. It's software as a service, so it's a, a, a monthly fee. Depending on the users, they, they download the app. If a company have, uh, has a 10 10 employees, they pay for these 10 employees. Uh, uh, for example, some um, companies that are services companies, well, this month I have 10 employees, but next month I maybe have 12 employees. Uh, well, it depends on the users you have. So this month you pay these euros, and next month you, you may pay more euros or less euros, depending on the, the employees they, that use the app. It's a Spanish company from Malaga. Yes, Malaga. 
do you have an international clientele? Is, yes. this, is your software that good in advance and the whole <laughs> world is interested? Yes, yeah, so we have a network distribution partnership model. So we work in Latin America with Telefonica. Telefonica uh, distributes our, our apps. Uh, Congratulations. They, thank you. <laughs> in Panama, for example, they work uh, with our app to um, follow up their sales team. And also they offer our apps into the portfolio as an added value because they, the, uh, these apps allow uh, Telefonica, for example, to catch and retain uh, clients because they make loyalty for their customers. And in Latin America, in South Africa, because we work also with uh, integrators company for software. And we here in Spain, of course. And last week, we traveled to Germany, to Berlin, to search for new partners there. So we are working hard. It's lovely to see <laughs> local companies mm -hmm. from right here in our province of Malaga <laughs> doing so well and creating things that the whole world wants. Hema, thank you so much for coming back to the program. I understood it a lot better this time. <laughs> thank you very a lot much. Better. And obviously something, if you've got a team, however small, it makes sense that you can coordinate, get messages into immediately, mm -hmm. as you say, in real time. Mm -hmm. If suddenly someone's not there to deliver, you can let them know, change of pickup plays and yes, all those right. kind of things. So well done. Thank Lovely to much. see you again. I wonder what kind of hair I'll have next time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Maybe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, really nice to see you thank and you, thank God. you all for joining us it's really nice to see you too if you would like to watch our show you can do so in real time live new show airs at 11 p.m. on Thursday evenings repeat on Friday morning and at other times you can then watch the catch-up from the RTV Marbella website or you can go to my website NicoleKing.es with links here to RTV Marbella to watch the shows also to uh, Zero Hero website with an ever-increasing list of restaurant bars and hotels who offer free soft drinks to the designated driver and a link to my Marbella Moments column in the Euro Weekly newspaper. That's all we have time for this week. Thank you so much to my guests and of course to you. Take care of yourselves, be nice to each other and remember to join us again next time for more of what's going on in Marbella Now.